Welcome back. And this next section is renal. Now this is actually my favorite section to talk about because I love the kidney. Now I don't want to work in nephrology. I certainly don't want to work in dialysis. But I have to tell you a little story. All the, the nurses that I work with chipped in and bought me a yellow t-shirt. And on the front of that t-shirt, it says, your output is the mirror of your soul. And that is very dear to me. And I wear it under my scrubs at least once a week. And the reason they gave me this, and the reason I talk about the kidneys so adoringly, is that if a patient comes in, an adult patient comes into the hospital with normal renal function, and we give them AKI, kidney injury, that requires dialysis. That patient's mortality, in-house mortality, goes up 50%. 50%. So whatever they're coming in with, whatever trauma, STEMI, pancreatitis, sepsis, whatever they come in with, whatever their mortality is from that illness, it goes up 50%. So here are the statistics. Somebody comes into the hospital, they have normal kidneys, we give them acute kidney injury that requires dialysis. We have 100 of those patients. 50 of them are gonna die in the hospital before they leave, 50% mortality. Of the 50 that are able to leave the hospital, all of them will be on dialysis and 25% of them will remain on dialysis the rest of their life, and 25% over time will recover renal function and come off dialysis. Now look at that, that's not very good statistics. 50 people are gonna die. Of the remaining 50, 25% of those, 25 people, will be on dialysis the rest of their life. So one of our jobs in acute care, in intensive care, is to make sure we monitor kidney function and watch out for the things that hurt the kidneys. So let's talk a little bit about the kidney. The kidney regulates everything, fluid, <clears throat> electrolytes, acid base, but the kidney also has endocrine properties. The kidney secretes erythropoietin, and that's what stimulates your bone marrow to make red blood cells and blood cells. So when the patient has acute kidney failure or chronic renal failure, no, the kidney stops or really slows down making erythropoietin, and many of those patients become very chronically anemic. The kidney receives about 20 to 25 percent of cardiac output. So that left ventricle contracts, about 70 cc's is ejected, that's stroke volume, and about 25 percent of that blood is in the kidneys. So the thing to always remember is if cardiac function declines, kidney function declines because the heart can't pump blood to the kidneys. Very important. Now, all of your organs, all of your very high level organs, your brain especially, has the process of auto-regulation. And what that really means is if <clears throat> the patient's blood, the patient, the person's blood pressure drops, the renal arteries will automatically dilate to bring more flow to the kidney. If the blood pressure is too high, the kidney, the renal arteries will constrict so that high pressure isn't transmitted to the kidney and cause damage. Now look at that slide. It says when the mean arterial pressure is 80 to 120, the autoregulation is, is very good. But remember, in our sepsis patient, sometimes our goal is a map of 65. Now, that's not so good for autoregulation in the kidney, and that's not so good for the kidney. So we would like a little higher blood pressure. And in the section at the end on multi-system, we'll talk about sepsis. So we'd like blood pressure for this person. <clears throat> on the test, they might ask you, what lab do you look at? What, what lab do you look at every day that gives you a very good indication of renal function? And most all nurses say creatinine, and that is correct. We look at creatinine every day, sometimes twice a day. But what else do we look at? If you ask your nephrologist, if you ask your nurse intensivist, what do we look at every day to really gauge um, renal function? We look at creatinine every day. We look at urine output for a 24-hour period, and we look at GFR, glomerular filtration rate. That's a very important number. It's a derived number, but it's still a number that we, we can figure out, and we can do that daily. Your PharmD can do it for you. You can calculate it if you have that long equation. So here's what can happen if you only look at creatinine. 
Mr. Smith is 75 years old. He comes to the ER at 10 o'clock at night complaining of 10 over 10, the worst chest pain he's ever had, an elephant sitting on my chest. So he's whisked right in for uh, acute coronary syndrome and we get a 12 lead EKG and we see ST elevations in lead one, lead AVL, V1 and 2, antral septal leads, he has ST elevation, his troponin is very high. Now we're going to whisk him right up to the cath lab. <clears throat> He's a STEMI alert, right? So we're going to whisk him right up there, but we get labs. In the ED we're going to get labs and we see at 10 o'clock at night his creatinine is 1. Now let me tell you a little bit more about Mr. Smith. He also has diabetes, and on admission, his blood pressure is very soft. He is beginning to go into cardiogenic shock. So we whisk him right up to the cath lab. Now, what are some of the determinants of renal function? His creatinine is normal, but he's hypotensive. He has a presence of diabetes, and we take him to the cath lab, and we're going to give him IV contrast dye. Now, in the cath lab, he gets two stents in his LAD, and he looks like a charm. His blood pressure comes back up. He's not having any dysrhythmias. He's not bleeding. His chest pain is all gone. And he goes to the step-down unit. He doesn't come to ICU. He goes to the step-down unit. Now, in the step-down unit, usually labs are done, again, at 4 or 5 in the morning. So his labs at 10 were normal. <clears throat> his labs at 4.30 in the morning, his creatinine is still 1. So you don't see any change in his creatinine. So you assume that his kidneys are normal. But if you're looking at GFR, his GFR was normal at 10 p.m., but it fell half normal by 4.30 in the morning. So the important thing is you have to look at all the parameters. In GFR, normal GFR, glomerular filtration rate, is about 180 liters per 24-hour period. So your, your glomerulus and the cortex of your kidney filter 180 liters of fluid a day. Now there's nobody that pees 180 liters a day. No, you'd be a little raisinette on the floor. So after the glomerulus in your nephron, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal con convoluted tubule, that part of the kidney is going to reabsorb water, regulate um, electrolytes and osmolality, and get urine and keep your serum osmolality normal. Right? That's the process of the liver, uh, of the liver, of the kidney. So now if something happens and glomerular filtration rate drops, urine output is also gonna drop later on. So the bottom line for this slide is there are three things we look at to determine renal function. Creatinine and GFR and how much urine has this patient put out in a 24 hour period. Very important.